Hi everyone, welcome to Grunge Week 2020. So this video is to give you a little bit of background on um, who Kurt Cobain is or was, um, what grunge music is, and what was going on in the 90s, and how this all sort of plays together in order to make this documentary that we're going to watch a counter argument. So to start off, Grunge music um, became popular in, or actually emerged from Seattle in the early 90s, maybe late 80s or so, um, before it hit mainstream, it was sort of the late 80s. Um, and it encompasses what Seattle weather is like through music. And I think that's really cool. Um, so for those of you who maybe are unfamiliar with what Seattle weather is like, it's very, um, dreary, sort of dim, uh, lots of rain, misty, um, sort of like a dreary March day, but like all year round. Um, and so they say like that that sort of idea leaked into the music and that's how grunge was born. So the music is sort of melancholy, um, angsty, but in a different way that like than like emo music was, if you remember emo music. Um, anyway, so this is stuff that probably your parents listened to um, if they were like part of a Gen X um, age group. Um, so yeah, they were probably teenagers when this came out. I just started listening to it because I like, you know, rock music or whatever. And that's what they played a lot of Nirvana on the music or on the state, the radio station that I listened to growing up. So that's sort of how I got into this myself. Um, anyway, so the music is kind of darker, kind of heavy. Um, definitely, like I said, a lot of teen angst. Um, but it sort of was born out of the punk music that came out of California in the eighties or so. Um, if you had me as a student last semester, I'm sure I probably talked about punk music at least once. Um, so now you're graduating from punk music and you're going into grunge. It just seems like a natural progression. Um, anyway, so Kurt Cobain was like the voice of a generation. He was sort of the, the figurehead or the pioneer of what we think of as grunge. So actually, his or Nirvana's music. So Kurt Cobain was the lead, lead singer of Nirvana. Um, there was also Kurt Novostelic, who was the bass player, and um, Dave Grohl was the drummer. He wasn't the original drummer, but he was sort of the drummer that was with Nirvana when once they became famous. And you might know Dave Grohl from um, from the Foo Fighters. He's the lead singer of the Foo Fighters. Um, he's also involved with some other bands such as um, Queens of the Stone Age. Anyway, so um, Nirvana, like, they have a little bit more of that punk influence that I sort of mentioned, um, more so than some of their um, contemporaries, such as Soundgarden. Um, Chris Cornell was the, the lead singer of Soundgarden. He was he died in Detroit at the Motor City Hotel, Motor City Casino Hotel in 2017. Um, I'm not sure if you guys would remember that or seeing that on the news. Um, anyway, so um, this music, like I said, is angsty, sort of political, um, kind of heavy, and um, it was it was a type of rebellion, and it changed the music industry. Um, it was very like underground and small, like I said, small Seattle clubs. Um, half the time, like these, these kids weren't of age. So they played like in garages and played for like neighborhood friends and stuff. And um, people would record it on cassette tapes and pass those cassette tapes around. And that's sort of how it got big, um, which is kind of cool to think about. Um, anyway, so um, Kurt Cobain, he, like I said, he was sort of the figurehead and the voice and like the embodiment of grunge. Um, with grunge came a lot of flannel shirts, layering, kind of like these grandpa sweaters. Actually, this really was my great grandmother's sweater. I think either she made it or her friend made it. So, um, but I think of it as my 
grandma Kurt Cobain sweater. This is actually a replica of what he wore on um, MTV Unplugged. Um, so I'm going to post some things for you guys to like check out and listen to if you want. Um, there is an article that I definitely want you to read about his biography, um, just to kind of cover some things that I might have missed um, in my little video here. So anyway, um, Kurt Cobain sort of had this mystique about him and this sort of public persona that everybody thought of when, you know, like I said, the embodiment of grunge. So he sort of had this air of like depression and angstiness and like just kind of a burnout, like too kind of cool for things, but also like didn't fit in with the cool kids and um, just overall like this sort of alternative vibe um, that was very much um, wrapped in like this idea of like depression, um, the world sort of sucks the thing. Um, I think, like I said, we kind of saw this in emo music, but this was, this was kind of darker and different and not so like whiny. Um, so you'll, you'll be able to listen to this music and sort of get the idea of what I'm talking about um, which I'll post on Moodle. So with this idea that he was depressed, oh my goodness, he was a huge heroin addict, which was so sad, especially because he had like a young daughter when he died. Um, and this, so this is where that idea of like heroin chic came from as well. So that was a very big fashion movement along the times of um, when grunge music was really getting big. So Nirvana, like, although this started off as, like, this alternative, like, anti-establishment, um, son of punk sort of music, it became really big and changed the face of music and changed, like, what MTV was playing and, um, like, what teenagers were listening to and stuff and sort of gave birth to this, this new wave of music. And um, we sort of saw those repercussions throughout the 90s and into the early 2000s. Um, although music has changed so much since streaming, and this is a totally different conversation, but we lost some of that um, influence, I think. And I just don't think music is as good anymore. But, you know, I guess that's what old people say, right? So when Kirk, so Kurt Cobain died when he was 27. He was married to Courtney Love, who was like a, another huge name in grunge music. She had her own band and her own music. Um, they had a daughter. Her name was um, Frances Bean Cobain. And um, Kurt Cobain shot himself in the, at, like the attic or like the upper level of a garage um, with a shotgun and was supposedly high on heroin at the same time. So how this sort of fits into the documentary is the documentary challenges the idea of how he died and his relationship with Courtney Love and sort of this public persona or idea that um the the mythology of who Kurt Cobain is um so that's why we're watching this is um it sort of gives us a counter argument to what we believe is um Kurt Cobain's life and his legacy um, I guess one of the pr issues was, is they were afraid that when so many people looked up to him, Kurt Cobain, um, of that generation, they found out he committed suicide because like, he just, you know, I mean, we all know why that happens. Um, but people were afraid that so many people, so many young people looked up to him that there would be copycats and that it was glamorizing suicide. And he had this like, you know, glorious and beautiful death, which is not true. And um, this documentary definitely challenges that. Um, not only the idea of suicide, but Kurt Cobain actually, like, killing himself. Um, and like I said, we could learn about counter-arguments through, you know, reading articles or reading text from textbooks and stuff like that. But I really hope that this gives you an idea between, 
my sort of um, lecture, quick and dirty idea of what grunge music is and who Kurt Cobain was um, paired with the article that I'm going to have you read. It's just a short little web page from like biography.com that will give you more insight to his life and stuff. Um, so I hope you do read that and in order to help the, um, the documentary make sense. And so you can actually see how counter argument is happening here. Um, another thing to note about the documentary is that we're going to see both live action and um, people like talking heads kind of when talking head is like when somebody looks into a camera and talks kind of like what I'm doing right now. Um, so we're going to see that like people that were actually involved. Um, we're going to hear recordings and we're going to see um, actors portraying Kurt Cobain and his wife and their um, their life together. So um, that kind of gives you an idea of how synthesizing research works. So we have direct quotes, we have indirect quotes, and then we have um, people kind of giving their size of the story. So that would be like you giving your um, opinions and details into the paper and how that sort of fits in with your sources and how to kind of transition between indirect and direct quotes and when it's important to switch between those. Um, so those are all things that I want you to kind of keep in mind as we watch this documentary. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you learn something and I hope that you at least enjoy learning about this man's life and his legacy and how this documentary sort of challenges those ideas. Um, again, so I know that this might not be your favorite genre or something that you've even ever heard of, but I hope you give it like a fair shot and a fair try. And if you don't like it, then, um, you know, that's your opinion. I can't really grade you down for that. Um, but anyway, like, I hope you do give it a fair shot and I do hope you enjoy this documentary. Um, if like me, you wear something grunge worthy, um, I want you to take a picture of it or, um, I don't know, send me a video of you doing your homework in your grunge clothes or your band tees and, um, you'll get some extra credit. So I'm going to try to plug in some extra credit here and there. Um, especially as we make this crazy transition. Um, so thank you for watching this video and I hope that you enjoy this documentary as much as I do. I've seen it so many times I could probably quote half of it. Um, and like I said, I'm super bummed that we're not doing this together, but now you can sit back and enjoy it and maybe your parents or something will enjoy it too because like I said, they're part of this generation. Um, again, so enjoy, good luck. If you have any questions, please let me know. And I will see you guys soon.